Well, uh, it is the world's only uh, cross matrix safety light curtain. <laughs> right, well, okay, so visually it looks, it's obviously mounted on a homemade uh, stand for demonstration purposes, but visually it looks like any other standard off the shelf light guard. But this one is unique in terms of its optoelectronics because we've made this little control box to simulate a machine. Okay. So when these two, two units, the transmitter and the receiver, are aligned mm -hmm. properly, then the machine is allowed to operate. Oh. So that's what this green button down here is, which you may not be able to see, now you can see it. So when this guard is aligned, that will come on. Okay. So everybody knows it's impossible. You know, you can't, you can't align them at all, as, as you can see. It's really not that, it, you just can't do this. In the world of light curtains, this, what I'm doing now, is actually impossible. What's the stuff in the way? There you go. That's actually impossible. Well, maybe if I turn it upside down, maybe it'll work better. And there you go. That's really cool. <laughs> so basically, it's plug and play. If they are generally speaking in, in line, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter, within about 30 degrees, say, they will work. Okay. And the reason for that is because a conventional light guard, the beams are linear, mm -hmm. as they all are, um, but the standard, which is the 61496 standard, which is an international standard, dictates that the transmitter, which is this one, the beams have to be focused using lensing down to one and a half degrees divergence angle. That's the reason why a conventional light guard is so hard to align because it means that the beams coming out are so narrow that you've got to align them absolutely perfectly or they just won't work. So it's not the fault of the manufacturer that guards are typically very difficult to set up. It's the standard that causes that. But this guard, being that it's not a linear guard, it's a cross matrix guard, is not subject to that optical focusing rule. So what happens is, on this one, the transmitter, every transmitter beam is actually scanning to each corresponding receiver optic, and vice versa. Each receiver is looking at every transmitter. So what that means is you get this cross matrix array. So the beams are looking everywhere, they're all over the place. And that's the reason why you can move it around and it'll work. Very cool, very cool. Um, so put your hand between it. But the curious thing is that actually it's the, the, the further away you mount it, the easier they are to align. Because by definition, cross matrix is it's, it's, it's trying to find all the transmitters and receivers. So the closer they get, the harder it is to look down that far, if you follow. Mm -hmm. So these, it, these operate easier the further apart they are, which is the opposite of a conventional guard. Can you show me the trick with the uh, cart, business card? Or, uh, uh, well, I don't, I don't, I mean, the, this particular one is hand guard, it's a hand guard. The beams okay. are 38 millimeters apart. And, you know, it's, as you can tell, it's really, really difficult you know, to uh, <laughs> put anything too thin in there. It's the only guard in the world where it doesn't make a difference what the thickness is. You're going to block a beam. This one's a hand guard from a legal standpoint, but in practicality, it actually will detect anything.